And as this is my last Black Desert Guide, it's a bit of a rant, I want to empower you guys to be patient and to think and to realize that you can do it and that I'm not better than any other player. I just happen to be patient and think and this is the result. And you guys can do this. I know you can do this. TLDR. I buy items on the market whenever their prices are a small, tiny fraction of the huge amount of cost to get one on average. Oh, can I get your coal? Where are your billions at? Are they tall? Are they hefty? Are your billions getting you refreshments? Are your billions getting you Mike and Ikes? Oh, you like Mike and Ikes? Can I get your coal? Uh, that probably had no place in this video. Hello, I'm Blade Boquest, and this is my last Black Desert Guide. Alright, on the serious side though, this is probably my last Black Desert Guide, you guys. It's going to be a big one. There's a lot of things you have to understand. Maybe it'll help you, maybe it won't. The best strategy in the world won't work unless you do. So we're going to go through a lot of interesting things, you guys. I just finished the Blade Edge series. That was my biggest BDO series. It finished last month. And overall, this year I've had the most amount of content released for you guys. Guides, commentary, and all sorts of different uh, coaching segments and things that we ran through highly edited in order to help you guys get exactly what you need. I want to take this time and just thank my Patreons. All five of them. Um, thank you guys. We are now up to $39 a month total support from everyone. So that, uh, it just war it, it warms, I'm warm. It warms my heart. I'm, I'm not cold. And, um, I'm just, it's, it's warming. It's a, it's a warming thought process and it's, it's, thank you for, thank you for the $39 a month. It's, I am warm. All right. So there's a couple of technical terms you guys are going to need to understand to get the most out of this video. Number one, opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is very simply the next best thing you're giving up by choosing a chosen result, choosing one path. What is the next best thing you're giving up? That is your opportunity cost, and you're going to have to understand that, and it's going to be brought up a lot in this video. The next thing you're going to need to know, and we're going to go over the math on screen, is probability. The probability of A is equivalent to 1 minus the probability of not A. So in one of my former videos, I asked you guys a question, which was, if you have a 20% chance of getting a certain enhancement, and you do it five times, what are the overall odds that you're going to get that result five tries 20 percent chance each try a lot of people said 100 percent. that was the most common answer a handful of people had very bizarre crazy i have no idea how they got it all over the the spectrum percentages and a bunch of people who couldn't care less and just don't think and go through this game with the unthinking motion of a brute would just say 50 percent. you either get it or you don't but all of that is insufficient the correct answer is 68%. Now you guys have been waiting for this answer for quite a while. I put it in comments, I think a couple months ago on one of my earlier guides before I started doing the Blade Edge coaching series. And uh, I penned that comment. So hopefully if you guys are paying attention, you got the answer and you don't have to wait as long as this video. Now, how does that work? You have 20% chance of getting something. You do it five times, you have 68%. That's not very good. Well, what happens if you have a much less percent chance of getting something? What if you have a 5% chance of getting something and you do it over and over and over again? How many tries would you have to do in order to get 100%? Well, in truth, the way probability works is it continuously gets closer and closer to that number, but it never actually reaches the 100%. You'd have to have an infinite amount of trials. But if you wanted to get around a 90% chance of getting something, like from all of your collective trials, and you have a 5% odds per enhancement attempt, you would have to do it 50 times. That would bring you up to a 92% chance of getting it on again, a 5% per try. Now imagine if you have something like that, and we're talking about, for example, a Tet Layton going to a Pen Layton. What is 50 Tet Laytons that could definitely 
be just blown up from not succeeding on this. How much is that worth? Quite a lot. Now, if you have a 10% chance, that comes down significantly. And if you have a 10% chance with a high fail stack, you might have around 15, if you do 15 different attempts, collectively, you'll have around an 80% chance of getting it. Now, that's where my math basically stopped. Now, that's not a sure thing at all. And you don't want to go into this thinking, I'm going to spend a huge amount of income with a 20% chance of just all of it will be destroyed. Especially if you're looking at 15 times the price of a Tet Layton. It's over 100 billion right there. And that's only an 80% chance of getting it. So you have to understand opportunity cost and probability. And we're going to go over a lot of scenarios here where you guys can understand what happened to me and how this all worked. And at the very least, it'll be a new strategy for you guys to think about in terms of reaching your own goals. All right, guys, let's get into the game. Ah, okay. all right. Yeah, he's older now, isn't he? You don't quite remember him looking like that. He has gray hair now and a beard. Though not quite like me. I have every single investment bank open in the game. and I can show you exactly where they are, what they do, and whether or not it's worth it. So let's get right into it. Ah! Oh, jeez. Hate when he does that. I've been playing this game for over four years, creating guides for you guys for over four years. And my time is almost done. It's almost done. I don't actively play the game anymore, and I stopped actively playing it sometime at the end of 2019 after I reached my last in game goals. My remaining Black Desert community goals are all relating to guides and videos. And while this is the last guide, there will be additional videos that I will be making for the Black Desert community throughout the next coming months. Once those videos are done, this is where it gets exciting, I will be streaming Black Desert for one more week. One more solid week of streaming Black Desert, and the final Think Tank plan will occur. Most of you guys don't know what this is. A very select few of, it, of you heard about it at TwitchCon. I can tell you this, it involves more silver than anything I've ever done before, and no player in the world has ever done this. That is the final Think Tank plan that is coming to the BDO community once my work for creating not necessarily guides, but additional videos that need to be made are done. Alrighty, so I wanted to log in here, you guys, and talk a little bit more about the details of the situation here. And if you've never watched one of my videos before, you were thinking, this guy can ramble. And that's true. That's true. But ultimately, the secret behind this method is really just basic common sense. And it's such a practical, easy thing. And so many people are always looking for YouTube videos or they're looking for that next answer on Twitch or from a streamer's DMs or something that's gonna just add zeros to their bank account. And you guys have to understand this stuff is easy to understand and it's harder to do. So a lot of it has to do with just kind of stories and build up and uh, you know, prefacing what's going on here. TLDR. I buy items on the market whenever their prices are a small, tiny fraction of the huge amount of cost to get one on average. Now, is that mind blowing? Actually, in a way it is because so few people do it. I have a long history of doing it extremely successfully and well. April 23rd, 2016, two months after the game launched, most of my gear was plus seven and plus eight with some of it even plus five. The reason that it was only plus five and plus seven and plus eight is because I did not want to spend the cost of an armor stone and a weapon stone to enhance my gear even to plus nine. Simply the fact that there was a chance of losing my net worth, my armor stone or weapon stone, I was unwilling to invest that 200k. And instead, I looked at the long term strategy, even as back in the first month or two of the game and even in beta. Okay, so essentially with making money in games, you need to figure out ways, it comes down to this. I always use this expression, it's exactly the heart of the matter. You need to learn to bring items from low yield to high yield. What that means is, there are areas in the game where there's a surplus of items that people just don't want. And you get iron, you get a bunch of it, they're everywhere. There's a ton of people collecting it. And there's probably a lot of new players just kind of wandering into this area collecting it. They're like, oh great, what is it? I've destroyed a few of mine, I've vendored some. But imagine that you're an armor smith that can, I don't know how this game works, but we'll just say use a ton of it um, quickly by using it in refineries or workshops or things like that. So they need a surplus. 
So this person that needs tons and tons and tons of it will usually buy it uh, pretty high. They're like, here, give me, you know, give me a thousand units of this. So you have to keep in mind that when you're charging or when you're paying a low price for an item, you're not manipulating anyone, you're not hurting them, and you're not taking their wealth because it's through the mutual agreement of two people that want to make a transaction. And only if your gold is more valuable to them than their items are, will they trade with you. It doesn't take advantage of anybody because it basically makes the customers win and it increases competition and forces innovation. But we don't have to get too complex with this. And usually they're like, great, that sounds good. And it can be double what you paid for. Then you know what you can do? Once you figure out a way to make money in a game like that, then you systemize it. You have them out there working for you, making more money than they could make otherwise, you then have your entire time freed up. Then you get all the items that you got for the same low price, you already have your contracts, or at least your agreements with people that want to buy those items, and you basically built a company in a game. And as long as there's an MMO that has free trading, you can do this in any system. In this game, there's literally, as far as I know, no iron fields, there's no manufacturing iron plants. I don't know. I made up the entire thing. It makes sense as an example because that's how you make money. That's the process of moving things from low yield to high yield. But that's what I've always used everywhere and it always works. Good luck you guys. Let's see, I love when Blade talks about investing. It makes me happy. Thanks man. Uh, same, Blade equals Guru. <laughs> Thanks DJ. Chicken wins. Uh, Blade. Papa Blade teaching us basic capitalism. Yeah, capitalism. That's why I love it. It's the only system in the world where it allows people to elevate themselves to whatever level they want to because they have the right to work as hard as they want, whenever they want, for as long as they want. That's great. It's fantastic. Profit is really just the salary of an investor. You've spent the work, you've learned the marketplace, and then what you do by setting up these systems uh, you're getting paid for your knowledge of how to move goods from where they're not wanted to where they are wanted and you get paid for providing that service. It's literally how it works. So it's just faulty thinking when people think people get it taken advantage of when others make money. It's just not true. You don't know this Blade, but I taught economics as a teacher's assistant for a few years and I couldn't agree with you more. You're spot on bro. Dude, that's great! <laughs> how cool. Thanks so much. You just gave a short business seminar through a video game. Welcome to my stream, Chicken Wins. It's what I do. I was unwilling to invest that 200k. And instead, I looked at the long-term strategy. Even as back in the first month or two of the game, and even in beta. I explained it in beta, how to build wealth. In any game, the principles are sound. I didn't invent them. They were there for me to learn, just like you guys are learning them. Sorry, BDO. Got a pretty strong love-hate relationship with this game. <laughs> Last time I logged in was 60 days ago in order to get my 18th pen. It was more of a meme than anything. Uh, I live-streamed it for fun, and I got a good deeds ring. I just felt, you know, good deeds. Of, if anything, if I'm going to get a, a pen accessory, let's get a good deeds rig. You know, it's what I attempt to stand for as well as I can, as often as I can. Um, anyway, so the first item that I sniped was actually a plus 15 Tartus Gloves. Ultimate Tartus Gloves. Now, I was unwilling to spend 200k on an armor stone or 300k on a weapon stone because it represented a chance at losing net worth. And net worth was so important to me based off of my strategy of leverage. That was been, that's been my four-year strategy that I've continuously espoused in my guides and my coaching and live as often as I could. I've tried to share with you guys the truest way that I believe to be extremely wealthy and be extremely successful. And uh, this ultimate plus 15 Tartus gloves, I think was like 20 million or something. And again, April 23rd, 2016. Oh man, you guys are done now. Yes, this is it. This is why I'm doing this. You guys.
guys are out there all the time doing these missions, getting one little hunter seal after three hours of work. There's weights on your shoulder and your grandma's trying to make you cookies. That's insane. Just making the money, waiting to snipe the items. We have victory. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. So we don't even have any pry accessories. And the chest is only plus eight. We're at 85 one. We're at 85 and 185. Yes! Perfect way to end a 17 hour stream. Hells yeah. Oh, I know, right? Now I'm all the way down to what, 35 mil again? The reason this was so significant is because the average cost to create your own plus 15 was above 20 million. And then the average cost in order to create an ultimate piece of gear was still significantly higher. Now, there are very few of you that have played long enough to remember what I'm going to tell you. So you'll probably be hearing this for the first time. But back in my day, there were workshops where you had to actually put your gear into the workshop system with an armor stone, wait hours and hours and hours, and then come back far later and see if your piece of gear became gold. And more often than not, it would not. And people had to churn pieces of gear through these workshops time and time again, 30, 20 times. I mean, they're all random. It's all different. We know RNG in this game is huge. But um, it was incredibly difficult to do, and it was very costly. So I kept my gear extremely low because I didn't want to lose the net worth, and I was waiting for the opportunity to snipe. And by sniping... I was buying something on the market that was worth far more than I had to pay. Now, this is an inherent fault inside the Black Desert system. It does not repre represent capitalism. It instead has, hot, it has ceilings and it has floors. And what those represent are, I want to sell this item that I have. Someone else wants to pay for this item. However, you are not allowed to sell it for the value it has to another player. You're restricted by this price ceiling. And what happens if something's worth 50 million and you're only allowed to sell it at 10 million? Does anyone sell it? Why would someone sell it? They would lose 40 million. Now, people do still sell it if they're quitting the game, if they've given up and they're, you know, in despair because of they got kicked from the guild or, you know, they lost other money on enhancement. Uh, they do it because they are desperate for that 10 million because of something else that they want. Everyone has their different reasons. We don't know each reason, but what we do know is if items are buyable and sellable, they will be bought and sold. But if you have these price ceilings far below the value of the item, it is not a free market and it's very, very rare that you get one sold at this price point. If you do, and you will, <laughs> The people that are patient win big. We gotta stay within the silver range. Is that still live? Oh crap! Don't run it then, don't clip it, it's fine. What I meant to say was, yes! All right, got the next piece of gear. All right, yeah. Well, I guess I could put this on my warrior now. <laughs> Is that guy who said I don't spend my silver to gear myself still here? Because the last time somebody said that, I got the tri Basilisk belt the same day. But you got the head witch. Yes, I did. Won't be long until the whispers start coming in. Anytime something like that hits the market, everybody wants to know if I was the one. And that's been my strategy for as long as I've played this game. And I've always talked about it openly. And the only people that I know that have really used that strategy to success are guild members and Snake. Those guys, when I eventually joined that guild, I was in there for about a year, I found out that those guys have basically used the same strategy that I used to get all of my pens. And I had 17 pens, plus this good deeds ring. So, it was cool to find out that they basically had been using this strategy independently of me. And of course, other people have used it as well. But what I'm saying is, this is the strategy this right here is the strategy to leverage your net wealth, you guys. Do you want to always be finding your best min-max silver per hour rate? Or do you want to find ways of having your active income, like my guides describe and other streamers and guides and guide makers describe? Do you want to have it with your passive income? Do you want to have your opportunity, opportunistic income where you can basically uh, 
build huge amounts of equity if you can buy something for a low price and then have this huge gain? And do you want to have your long-term investments that take all of the money that you've had and continuously compound the ROI? You need to be using all of these tools. It's so important. So I don't really remember the windfall profit that could be that was labeled from the uh, plus 15 Tartus gloves. I don't remember, but it was significant. And I spent those first months learning the economy, learning the workshops, learning life skilling. And then since then, I was very behind in levels. I was very behind in gear for the first couple months of the game because I always said I was going to play this game for two to three years. And my hopes was to help as many people as I possibly could. The channel has seen 4 million views over the last four years, 29,000 subscribers. And also to leave what I thought would be a content creation legacy where I could make it as a, as a career on YouTube and Twitch. And that one has not uh, panned out. But I came into this game thinking I'd played it for two to three years and my strategies were vast and broad and long term because I knew these ways would give me the largest increase eventually. And they did. Now I'm logged in because there, there's always rumors about everyone, but people think I sold my accounts. I did not sell my accounts. I would never sell my accounts simply for the fact that it's against terms of service. And that alone makes it wrong and I'm not willing to do it. So here I am logged in on my account. I have been in a guild since TwitchCon actually. And uh, what I've done with my 17 pens is basically put them on the market for people who are actively playing this game and want them as much as I did. Like I had so much excitement and really absolutely loved getting each one. All right, stop. into the slanted thing yeah yeah stream um so going further so i knew this strategy would work and i talked about it as much as i could especially in 2016 but what i was always met with was resistance it was almost universally known by the public that this was a stupid strategy of course they were wrong and uh, I heard time and time again, and I mean hundreds of times, you guys, over the months, that no one would ever sell a duo ogre ring. That it would never, ever happen. And why? Because we don't have a capitalistic market where someone can get the value of their item. Instead, they are forced to sell at a loss through these price ceilings. It's a very restrictive market. Less so now, but it was extremely restrictive then. And I just heard it was impossible. I don't think I can even think of someone who believed that my strategy would work. I'm sure there were. And my close friends know me well enough, they believed in me. But anyway, do Ogre Ring, right? So I still maintained very low gains and I actually got to 855 million silver. We're talking about million, not billion. And that was the price of the Ogre Ring back then. The do Ogre Ring, that was the highest you were able to sell it for. Uh, okay, it's a billion or something now. 2016, 855 billion. And I saved and I held that. Now, that was something I called the silver threshold gearing method. I invented it. I talked about it all the time. And that means if you want a certain item, you get exactly the silver necessary to buy that if it goes to the market. Because if you can bid on that and if you can get it, that represents a chance to multiply that huge amount of money by two or three times instantaneously and that's why you always have that as your silver threshold now what happens when you have your 855 million and this is hopefully you guys are understanding that this is the purpose of why i'm making this guide for you you can then do one of two things you can move your silver threshold up so in that day and age the next threshold would be a tri ogre ring eventually someone would sell a tri ogre ring since i did all this uh let's see 18,630 18, have been sold. That is mind-blowing. Okay. 
And so you could jump your threshold from 855 billion to at that point, 2 billion, 375 million. So you make a decision once you reach the silver threshold, but you never, ever allow yourself to go below that. And this is incredibly important. This is where your willpower and your savings come in. This is what it's all about. Now, if you don't want to go for the next gigantic gain, what you do is you keep the 855. So you're going for that ogre ring, right? And then anything past 855, you spend. It's yours to spend. But because you're invested in your own future, you're willing to give up these short-term desires in order to get the biggest leverage. And everyone thought I was crazy, but I knew better. And guess what happened? A duo ogre ring hit the Eden market. It was the first time ever. And back then we had to enter the CAPTCHA in order to get it. The whole type in the little key things. And I messed it up several times. I, it was there for like five or six seconds. Which actually let me know, and this was also confirmed by the other, there weren't any billionaires back then, but the other wealthy people, that no one had 855 billion, sorry, million, so million, million, million. No one had 855 million at that time. And I just freely purchased it. And I bought the first one ever. And to make a duo ogre ring cost so much more than that. So instantly, through, through my patience, willpower, diligence, and strategy. Boom, we have this giant windfall gain of hundreds of millions. And that set me well ahead of a lot of other players right then and there. And there became these crazy memes that I was this duo ogre wielding warrior. Now I spent all of my time on economics at that point, learning the workshops, building my strategies, not practicing PVP. And there are great videos where I have my duo ogre ring and I'm fighting in node wars and I'm just completely killed by a ranger. It's pretty funny. His ultimate, not his ultimate, but my ultimate's trying to engage. I misplaced it and I die. And it was so funny to everyone because I was so extremely well geared. Why was I geared? I'm sure I wasn't the best at making money. I wasn't the best at grinding. I wasn't the best at PVP. If I was the best at anything, and I don't think I really ever was, it was patience. Just waiting. And that's available to all of us that have willpower. Now that's one example. Okay, well what about your pens? What about the big gains, Blade? Right? That's what you're thinking? Well, January 2018 comes around. And I am adhering to my silver threshold gearing method. Absolutely, that's what I would always do. As soon as I got the duo, Ogre, I would start building it up again for the next piece. And my next threshold was, of course, the Tri-Ogre. And I got that somewhere in January of 2017. And then it was the Tet Ogre, which was, at that point, I think 7.8 billion? Uh, you can ask Choice. Choice attempted to make a variety of Tet Ogres until I convinced him that his leverage, his net worth, his money that he's spending every hour for goes so much further if he would simply bid, 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 bid. And he took an over 20 billion pre-order off a of Ted Ogre and he started bidding like I suggested and he got it. And he got it. And what did that do? That saved him 10, 15 billion of what he would have spent. So think about that. That's your opportunity cost. By patience, by saving, by bids, you are giving up the next best option of getting it, which in his case was an extremely high pre-order that saved him 15 billion. Just added you know, that to his bank for him to use for his next piece of gear. Or if you're enhancing it, pre-orders and enhancing costs were around the same a lot of times. So that opportunity cost is either a high pre-order or it's that enhancing and it's at that for that item, 10 billion. Well, January of 2018 comes around, you guys. In January 2018, I bought the first ever pen Nuver sold on the market. No one ever thought it would be sold. I had the silver. Other people had the silver too. I just happened to be playing at five in the morning. It was 4.3 billion. 
a pen -nuver. Now, you know how much more valuable that's worth than $4.3 billion. And guess what? Because I was incredibly patient, I had these great strategies, I tried my absolute best to convince everybody of it, made so many guides that I always talk about this on live stream openly. Very few people do. But these are available to you when you guys have these goals. As you play on whatever server you play, this is available to you. And so a week later comes by, and then I buy the first ever pen red nose. It was never sold before. I was ready. I had the money. I bought it. It was $3.5 How much does it cost to make a pen red nose? A lot more than that. A huge amount more than that. One week later, the first pen muskins is ever listed on North America. Guess who bought it? I bought that too. And I'm already uh, kind of getting the chills looking at Blade Poker's name in this, uh, in this arena already. Uh, you played as a teammate of his last time. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to play on his main class warrior. Uh, but uh, do you think he's going to do well on this time around? I, I have high hopes for him. 100%. I have to say that in terms of pure gear related skill in this game, Blade Boquest topples 99.9% .9 of the players here. The man has purchased in the last month three pen items. <laughs> three pen items. Counter. It has been an amazing month for Blade Bow Quest, and he's actually it's four out. technically. Uh, are, are you kidding me? Is that <laughs> no. is that counting the, the counting the blue great sword? Is that yep? Oh, okay. Blade Bow Quest has four pen items. I, I would say that the chances are very very slim that he gets taken out of this tournament. And then a week after that, I bought the first ever pen mercenary steel great sword on the market. Now why? Because. I was willing to say no to the good to say yes to the best. Now, of course, you're thinking Dim Tree or for Red Nose, things like that. But for me, Pen, it had the same DR and the same evasion. So that was actually my target. And that's what you have to do. If you spend your money on every single increment, it might be more interesting in the actions of playing a game. But I'm telling you, you're going to lose out long term. And the way I was able to get this crazy success, I mean, this is four years into this game, you guys. I'm still rank one wealth. I mean, I know now, finally, uh, in the recent months, that there are players that have more silver than I do. But um, you can see the results of this. They speak for themselves because they're right. And I've tried my best to tell you guys about this. And a lot of you guys have listened. I mean, I have made uh, or my guides... Had, my audience have become, there have been so many billionaires made off of these strategies. Like you guys sometimes are listening. And as this is my last Black Desert guide, it's a bit of a rant. I want to empower you guys to be patient and to think and to realize that you can do it. And that I'm not better than any other player. I just happen to be patient and think. And this is the result. And you guys can do this. I know you can do this. It does depend on how much of your life you're willing to give up in order to earn some certain results. I put a lot into what I've done here. Now let's move on to the whole core of this video. Where's the 200 plus billion coming from? Again, I knew the silver threshold would work from the very beginning. And I worked it from the very beginning. And people would catch on and start to do it and start to understand and it became more acceptable for the billionaires to think this way. Well, the big gains were when it was pen accessories. Now, I had worked on pen accessories for years and hopefully you guys have seen the wagon reveal. It's the best video I've ever made. It was my second biggest investment ever. And uh, it's a hilarious BDO meme. It's great. That afforded me the first pen latent. Okay, I'm sorry, actually the second. The second pen latent ever sold in North America. Does that say what I think it says? Does that actually say? That does not say that I just got a pen latent. Pen latent. We've been working on this pen accessory for three years it was 21.7 billion for a pen latent pen latent now we already talked about the probability earlier right so if you have 
15 tet latents and tet latents let's just say an arbitrary cost of 10 billion right it goes up and down but we'll just say 10 billion if you have a pretty high fail stack like in the 200 ballpark which is pretty costly in its own right and you're going for a 10 percent chance on success to get this accessory if you did 15 attempts you're looking at an 80 percent chance of your at that point over 150 billion not being wasted you have a 20 percent chance to lose everything in that scenario but you have an 80 percent chance investing 150 billion to get a pen laden well i had a hundred percent chance at 21.7 percent or it's 21.7 billion because i waited for it and if i didn't get it i'd still have the money so it was either a certain exchange this money for the latent at this cost, or you have your money and it's no loss to you. So what did that do? The 21 billion saved me probably 150 billion right there of opportunity cost of what I would have to spend on average in order to create this. But I did it the same way all of these guys were. And uh, I don't know. I know my tone is almost a little patronizing at this point. I, I don't mean it to be, um, but uh, yeah, guys, I just, I want you to believe in yourselves. You can do this. I'm not better than other players, but I have been able to achieve a lot more than almost every player. And it's not because of some insane, miraculous, innate skill or anything. It's just very common practices that were utilized. And the best strategy in the world won't work if you don't. So I want to encourage you guys, and I know it's a bit of a stern tone. If it's not important to you, I mean, hey. This is a game and you guys should get out of it exactly what you want and no more and no less. And that's why for me, my pinnacle of playing BDO was reaching 300 AP. That's what I wanted to do. I did it with a Tet Nuver, which is funny. Even though I had the pen earlier, I sold that for investments, which worked out. But um, yeah, I stopped at 300 AP. That was what I wanted out of the game. This game is so easily playable for decades and it just depends on what you want to trade a portion of your life for the entertainment that you're getting out of it. All right. Well, good. Pen Layton. 150 plus billion. That's awesome. Well, guess what? Because I had this silver threshold gearing method and because my next investments went well, if you haven't seen my how I made 55 billion in five hours video, that's my hands down best investment guide I've ever made. It analyzes the market, commodity, inflation, and it gives you exactly the how to think on investing. And I've not seen that anywhere. And what also is cool about that is I filmed the entire thing and I filmed my entire thought process while I was buying. Not when I was selling everything and like, hey, I made all this profit. No, no, no. I did it while I was buying my investments because I was so certain that it would work. And it made me 55 billion in five hours. So a couple months after the pen latent from the wagon reveal, within two months, I had enough dozens of billions, I mean, probably, I don't know, 100 billion or something, um, in like June of 2019, where I just had more pre-orders on things. And I pre-ordered then a pen crescent. I got the pen crescent at 32.7 billion. A day later, I got a second pen crescent. Because finally at this stage, this is what I've been waiting for, for people to actually have the items that I needed so that you would start to see them on the marketplace. So in 24 hours, I actually got two pen crescents. Yes! Yes! There it is! Yes! Let's do this! Let's freaking go! Let's freaking go right now! I just beat Black Desert Online! You are all here for it! You are all here! Let's freaking go! Yes! Guys, that's not all. Because that's the second Pin Crescent I bought today.
18 months. 300 wagons. Get this pin later. 21 billion. 32.7, 32.7. Double pin crescent in 24 hours. <laughs> and then I went to TwitchCon, I think. No, E3. That's what it was back in the summer. And uh, I had a pre order and a Bassy belt. And I got a Bassy belt for 24 billion, I think. And my 15th pin in Black Desert history is a pen freaking Bassy belt. Pen Layton, pen Crescent, and now, yes, God, yes, <laughs> I got a freaking pen Bassy belt. Can I stop, please? My God, wasn't even playing this last week. Go D3. What? So what is the cost to get these things? You know, even at the at the smallest degree, you would have to you would have to pay again on average. People get them earlier than this, and people never ever get them, no matter how many billions or hundreds of billions they put in. But on average, a pen crescent is not worth anything less than seventy five billion at least at the time that I purchased it. So that immediately doubled my net worth and if, or that investment. So think about that. Can you, if you could spend 30 billion and not lose anything, if you don't get the item, you don't get it, you still have your money. But if you do get it, it increases your net worth by double. And we're talking about an extra 30, 40 billion. How can you afford to grind hour after hour after hour after hour after hour after hour to earn the extra 100, 200, 500 billion to get the kind of gear that the top players in the world have. You can't. There aren't enough hours. There are not enough hours. And when I was in Korea with Choice, we were discussing this. And uh, it was not easy, but we talked about it. He brought it up to me. Like, he thought, you know, what is the best strategy to get this kind of thing? And what should you be doing with his gear and investments? And I was pretty clear on it. I said, Pretty soon, a Penn Tungrad ring will be listed in North America. I can feel it. It's about that time. I had a pre-order on it the day it came out. But of course, it takes forever for people to get enough and enhance them and then eventually sell it at the loss that we had to because of the restrictions and the fact that we don't have a free market that allows people to earn the value that they deserve. We don't have that. We have a restricted market. It's better now. I knew it was coming. Choice, unfortunately, couldn't get the... 50, 60 billion, whatever it was. He was pretty invested in Kafiris. I mean, top geared, top grinder, top streamer, top everything. PvP or like we just, he was the top of his game. Still is. And so uh, he asked me if I would put a pre-order on it. One ring to bind them. One ring to bring them all to the yeah. wine because you have a chance it's slight but you have a chance someone will sell it and if someone sells it you've earned 200 billion which represents nowadays i don't know we'll say hundreds of hours i don't think i want to say thousands of hours but hundreds of hours that you don't have to spend i was like everything is leverage that's how i became one of the most geared players in north america without being the best at anything Right? I'm not the best at anything, I don't think. I'm just okay at a lot of stuff, and I've leveraged my success into greater success. So we had this conversation. Well, here's the thing. I want to tell you my final plan, and I might as well just tell you. Should I tell you the final think tank plan right now? And so uh, he asked me if I would put a pre-order on it because he knew I was phasing out of the game and he knows my final think tank plan. And uh, I said, fine. Yeah. I said, okay. So I actually had a pre-order on that thing only until he could get enough money to cover it. Now, if I bought it, I sold it to him immediately at minimum so that he could buy it. You know, he could get the first Penton grad ring ever sold in an A. That's what we both wanted. We I knew it was going to happen, and I was covering the pre-order until he could. And uh, I actually sold it within that week, minimum price. Now, I want this to be clear. 
I've never done any real market trading. All of the items I have bought and sold have only had silver as a transaction. I've never taken anything on third party payments at all. And I never will. It's against terms of service. Now that alone is enough to make me not do it. And so many people couldn't care less about that. It means nothing to them. And honestly, if I sold <laughs> any of this stuff, I don't know because I've not gone to these sites and stuff, but I imagine I would get far more than I've ever made as a content creator for probably years. Like I know that there's value, but I don't own it, you guys. We're renting our accounts. We sign agreements with these companies and it's against TOS and I've never done it. And I want that to go on record for anyone who's unsure because I get these questions all the time. But I just sold it to him because I wanted him to have it and we talked about it. Now, you know, where'd my other stuff go? Milk Bag, who I consider the greatest warrior in the game. Fantastic, amazing PvPer. He didn't have a Penzarka, and I made my own Penzarka. I wouldn't have sold my Pen Dandelion and Zarka if not for the people that just wanted to carry on blades that were created by me. So I sold my Pen Zarka to Milk Bag. It was Men Price. Um, I sold my Pen Layton. The first legit pen, Layton, ever sold in the North American market. One was sold before that, which there are rumors of real market trading. And they seem credible, so that's completely disregarded. So the first one ever, first legit pen Layton ever sold in NA, which I bought from the Wagon Investment, which makes it so legendary, that's in Zethian's hands now. And in order to do that, I bought his pen narc at maximum, so that he'd have the money. And then he bought my pen Layton at minimum so that he could carry it on. He wanted, I wanted him to have it. I was happy to facilitate it. And nothing outside of the game was transacted. You know, we were guild mates. Zethian used to stream site me and kill me and stuff, but he's, he's a streamer. I really respect him as a warrior. And I think it's amazing that he wanted to carry that on. <sighs> Let's see. One of the snake guildies has my pen crescent. I don't know where my second pen crescent went. I don't know where my bassy went. I then later sold the pen narc that I bought at max. I sold it at min. Um, I sold my dandelion, not at max or min. That went to a person named Full Time Neckbeard, who actually transferred it into a uh, ninja dandelion. So that doesn't actually have my name on it anymore because I listed it when he had a. a buy order on it and it was removed I had let's see Ventos's pen vanguard shield don't remember who took that and uh, basically because I'm not actively playing the game I've decided you know and already did it obviously to give everything back uh, that I had which has created whatever silver you know is still in my banks and you know people have asked why haven't I just bought out a whole category of the market or something like that? I did buy out the coal at one point, which was more of a meme than anything. If you guys aren't familiar with that. I have 3,400,000 coal still. That's a pretty good meme. It's on my channel. But, um... Yeah, even if I did that, it's not... It, it wouldn't really help people. Because I would have all of one item. And that net worth would still be with me. Right? They would have the silver, I would have the items. And then the game changes over the years that I'm not active. And then whatever I have is probably worth more than whatever silver I spent. And at that point, it doesn't, it's just a wash. So uh, I gave my gear back to the community, but I still have the silver. Anyway, do you guys understand? The silver threshold gearing method made so much more sense before the central market. It still makes sense whenever you're looking at pen accessories because they're almost always sold less than the cost it takes to get them. And when it came to those two months, getting a pen Bassy, a pen Layton, a pen Crescent, a pen Crescent, that cost me total, what, like, I don't know, 65 mil, and then probably, it cost me just over 100 mil. 100, yeah, 100, and, 100 mil to 110 million for something that would cost me over 300 million to create myself. Probably close to the 350 or, you know. I might never be able to get it with 500 million or 500 billion. So that's how you guys, through these unique strategies, I've been able to create over 300 billion net worth. 
in two months. And sorry for the long-winded explanation. Um, yeah, like I said, Black Desert has been quite a journey for me, and this is my last guide, so I'm just kind of letting it out, I guess. Um, I've got some more videos to make for you. Obviously, you guys can see with the Patreon support and things like that, uh, I've been on YouTube for nine years. It's not been monetized until this April. So everything has actually been for free or whatever, you know, support has come in through Twitch. But I have over 300 videos on YouTube or 4 million viewers and $39 of Patreons. I appreciate the five of you guys that are there and all of my viewers, you know, I know not everybody can support, but I can't devote the time that I have to YouTube. I've spent so much time here. It's almost unbelievable, but I've left the best systems I could for every future Black Desert player, and I really hope you guys use them, because they'll work. They'll absolutely work. I want you to believe in yourself, or at the very least, believe in me, because I believe in you, and I know you can do it. So good luck, guys, and thanks for watching what I believe is my last Black Desert guide. Once my other Black Desert videos are complete, look for that final week on YouTube, on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash bladebowquest, I'll be doing something that no player has ever done, and something involving all of my silver. Thanks for watching, guys.